This video tutorial is for theme modeling and simulation unit manipulation and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to do a Google search to find appropriate pictures for your UFO hoax. You can see that what I've done to start with is that I've opened up the Google Chrome web browser and I've typed in the address bar at the top google.co.uk to access the Google search engine. What I'm going to do from here is I'm actually going to tell Google that I want to do an image search so I'm just going to click on this tab at the top. I've now been taken to the Google Images search engine and in here I need to type in keywords uh, that I want to uh, that might be used to tag particular images on the World Wide Web. So there's two pictures that I need to find for this task. The first one is a picture of a UFO spaceship and the second one is of a scenic background. So I'm going to start with the UFO spaceship. So my keywords I think are UFO. Once I've typed that in and press search images you can see that I'm presented with over 7 million results for UFO. That means that 7 million pages exist on the World Wide Web where images have possibly been tagged with the word UFO. Now I'm going to skim through these later on, or not all 7 million of them, but I'm going to have a flick through some of them later on. But before I do that, I want to now go and search for uh, scenic backgrounds. And to do that, what I would like you to do is to use this tab button here at the top of Google Chrome. And if you're not using Google Chrome, they have similar buttons on, for example, um, Firefox. This is Firefox, and there's a plus button here. And there's also a similar option in, in Internet Explorer here. And what that does is it opens up another tab where you can actually open up another web page uh, and multitask. So I could be searching. Uh, on this web page whilst remaining on this web page uh, in a different tab. So I'd like you to open up a different tab in your web browser, do another Google image search and think of the key words that you could use to find scenic backgrounds. So you might want to use the word landscape search for that which will bring up over 39 million, million images to do with the landscape. You might want to search for the word um, scenery so instead of the word landscape, I might want to type in scenery. And again, I get presented with uh, over 3 million images where these pictures have been tagged with the word scenery. So what I need you to do is I need you to find an appropriate picture uh, for a UFO and an appropriate picture for a scenic background. Now you can see that in the UFO search, what I actually want is just the spaceship. So my search for the keywords of UFO are not really bringing up the results that I require. Um, so what I might do is actually just type in another keyword and type in UFO spaceship. Now all I'm after, here we go, all I'm after is a, a UFO on its own with no scenic backgrounds. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these spaceships into a scenic background. So you can see here I've got quite a few um, options now available to me and I actually like this one here so I'm, I'm happy with this UFO spaceship I'm not going to do anything with it right now but I'm actually happy with this one so I'm going to go to my other tab and I'm now going to find an appropriate uh, scenery for me to put that spaceship onto um, later on so I'm just going to have a quick flick through some of these okay and you need to choose one that if you if you look at if you remember the images that we've already looked at um, for the UFO sightings, obviously the, the spaceship is going to be in the sky. So I need to find an image where the sky potentially takes up most of uh, the image. So for example, here I don't really want to work with this one because there's not much sky in it. This one's not a bad image here, but I also like this image. Now the deciding factor for me is going to be that. Uh, when I create this image, I want quite a large sized image uh, in terms of its dimensions, how big it is. So if you have a look at these numbers here, the bigger these numbers, the bigger the image. Now I don't want it to be too big. For example, I don't want it to be thousands and thousands in size because that way it will take up too much file space and it will be quite difficult to work with. But I also don't want it to be too small, so something like this here, 300 by 450 is just way too small. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use um, this image here. And so I'm going to click on it. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm not unable to use that one because it's been blocked, uh, it's been restricted in the uh, country that I live in. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to choose a different one. So this one here I actually like, but I think it might be too small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and click on page two and see if there's anything here that I could use. Now this is a nice image here, lots of sky. We've got some uh, water in here at the bottom, which looks like a river, and it's quite an appropriate size uh, in dimensions. So I think I'm going to use this one. So I'll try clicking on that one. And you can see that I have, I've actually got access to this one. I'm allowed to use it. But I need to go a further step. I need to click on full size image just here. So if I click on that, and you can see that I've now accessed this, this uh, full image at, at its correct size. I'm going to go back to the other tab, and I need to do the same thing with the UFO. So I'm going to click on it. There we go, I'm going to say full size image. And now I've got both of my images ready to use. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to um, merge and combine both of these images together using a piece of software online called Pixlar. And we're going to manipulate these images to make out our own hoaxed UFO sighting.